FBI agent for them. That's how I do it. At Mr. Parnell Holloway. She said Parnell. That's right. Parnell. How's your mama doing? Shut the fuck up. Ladies and gentlemen, thank y'all for laughing. I'm Parnell Holloway. Thank you so very much, man. Hey everyone and welcome to Behind the Grind. I'm your host, Miss E. Breezy. We're here at Napolini Express here at 323 Oak Street in Uniondale. Right now we have a very special guest. Not only is he super talented, but he is hilarious. He's an actor, a comedian, he's been in short films. He's been in Poor Girl, Rich Girl. He's also been in Ha Ha Hallelujah, Comedy Show, and Black in Action TV.com with DJ Envy. He's done stand-up comedy at NY Comedy Club, Broadway Comedy Club, Mohegan Sun Casino, and he's also done it at Funny First Fridays in Queens. This man is all over the place. Check you out. Yes, yes. So everybody, please welcome Mr. Pernell Holloway. Thank you. Thank you guys for having me. I appreciate you having me well, on your thank show. Thank you for being here. How are you doing today? I'm doing wonderful. You know, I had a beautiful day, and I figured we'd come here and do this interview with you and make it even more beautiful. Well, thank you. You just made my night. I do not tell you, it's that a rough day, but being here with you is an absolute, it's, it's an honor right now. Excellent, excellent. I'm glad to be here, sweetheart. Great. So tell everybody how you became interested in uh, stand-up comedy, and this is something that you knew you wanted to do. Uh, actually, it is. I, I knew I wanted to do comedy. I didn't know it was going to be stand-up or, or sitcom type of comedy. Okay. But ever since high school, that's where it started, the class clown thing, you oh, know? Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, uh, uh, what it was was from second to eighth grade, I went to school with all Portuguese kids. Oh, wow. So I kind of stood out as the African-American in the group. Mm -hmm. I didn't have to fight for attention. Okay. When I went to high school, I went in my neighborhood where I grew up, and it was all blacks. Oh. So there was nothing special about me there. Okay. So that's when I found myself coming out in class, you know, making little retorts to the teacher's comments or right, whatever right. goes on, just to get some laughter going. And that became my niche. Okay. And people began to know me for being like a funny person. The class clown. Yeah, okay, I was always a class clown, clown myself. Were you yeah, really? Yeah, always got picked on, so I had to find something else to turn it around. And okay. make, you know, instead of making fun of me, I had to turn around and make fun of myself a little bit. There you go, sometimes so, that's what we do. But let me tell you, I always got in trouble, though. I always Did got you? a phone call at home. <laughs> I was always in trouble. So tell everybody, how long you been doing this for? Actually, I've been doing stand-up comedy since 2000. Okay. Uh, I took a three-year hiatus from like 207 till uh, 2010. Mm -hmm. Had some personal things going on in my life. A lot of people say three years must have been incarcerated. Right, must right, have been, right. No, no. But I just had some personal things going on, and I've been back full time since 2010. Okay. So 2010 up until now, I've been grinding, as you mm -hmm. see. Uh, I've been staying focused with the stage play that you mentioned. Okay. Uh, we've been uh, touring in like seven different cities so far with oh, it. Wow, okay. So we have a lot of great turnouts at our different uh, performances. I'm very excited about the play mm -hmm. and then the stand-up comedy alone I you know there's a circuit that we run on and uh, I've been blessed to work with some of the top comics in the country oh, as wow. well as some of the up-and-coming guys that you may not ever hear about mm -hmm. right away right. but I'm working with so many talented people right now oh really so how many people do you have right now with you is it just you or you, you have a crew well what I do is I have a network of friends that are comedians that mm -hmm. we're all our own independent contractors basically uh -huh. you know what I mean it's like if I call a friend of mine I have to put together a show of mm -hmm. two or three comedians each person I call they may give me different prices each one of them because oh, okay. they're their own they, they know their own worth as far as what they're willing to work for right. and what so in that respect I don't have a a, a, a crew of people under me mm -hmm. I basically have a, 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 a a contact list. Oh, okay. And I can yeah, contact them. Book. Yeah, a little black <laughs> book. Yeah, and I can contact anybody I need to to okay. put together certain uh, shows in the tri-state area. Okay, so who are your biggest influences? Oh, uh, initially, when I was young, it was Eddie Murphy. Oh, Eddie Murphy was funny. absolutely that guy. He's like yes. Kevin Hart today. He yes. was that guy when yes. I was coming up. Then. And so I always had uh, admiration for him and the way he did his comedy. Mm -hmm. um, my aunt took me when I was 16 years old to go see Eddie. Did you meet him personally? No, I didn't get to shake his hand or anything like okay. that, but I went to a stadium where he was doing a... I think he was doing a material from stand-up um, from uh, Raw. Raw, there we go. Raw. Yeah, he there was we working go. on that material at the show I saw. So uh, that moment, being in the audience and watching him do what he did on stage and hearing the rupture of laughter coming from people, wow. I was like, that's powerful. And you did at 16, you said? I, I didn't get on stage at 16, but I seen him at 16. Wow, I, Yeah, amazing. I didn't touch the stage till uh, I tried it one time at 22 years old. Mm -hmm. I got on stage for a few minutes at a place called the uh, Peppermint Lounge okay. in Orange, New Jersey. A lot of people 
people are familiar with that place. That's where you're from. You're from New I'm Jersey, I'm from New right? Jersey. Oh, Newark, okay. New Jersey, actually, is where I grew up. Mm -hmm. And now I'm living in Queens, New York, uh, the past six years now. Okay, how do you like that? I love Queens. I love the location of Queens because I can get to Brooklyn. I can get to Long Island. Mm -hmm. And then if I have to go into Manhattan or the other it's boroughs, it's, it's, a travel, central, right, right. it's kind of a central location point right. for me. Yes, yeah, so okay. I love it. And then, you know, I, I like to drive. Uh, I don't really do the trains and bus thing, you oh, know what okay. I mean? Ooh. So when I moved to New York, one of the biggest things I noticed was the tolls. Oh, God. They kill us with the tolls yeah, here in New York. Yeah, they don't went up every, every year. Every time they go up. I have a joke. I had to write about it because it was that much on my mind, you right. know? Like, how are you paying across the street is how I look at it. <laughs> Basically. You pay $14? Basically. I, I have a joke. I said, my daughter asked me for $40. I said, girl, that's almost two Holland tunnels <laughs> and a Verrazano. <laughs> Which is true. Which is true. And then the know? gas. And then the gas. So that's one thing I had to learn how to uh, adjust to, mm -hmm. uh, the expensiveness of New York. But I love it. I absolutely love being here. Okay. And would you say this kind of lifestyle is competitive? Like Very competitive. Uh, I say, you know, the old saying, uh, people wish you well mm -hmm. until you start really doing well. Mm -hmm. It's kind of, uh, you, you get that amongst ourselves. You know, it's not so much the crab in the barrel, but it's just that the guy is wishing he had the talent that right. this person has or the connections mm -hmm. that this person has, you know. Because I know tons of comedians who've been out here for 20 years mm -hmm. and they have not really achieved success. Right. I mean, they're funny mm -hmm. on stage. They could, they could deliver. Mm -hmm. But as far as a following, as far as a career, mm -hmm. I don't see where they're elevating. Right. And so me coming back into the game, I definitely am looking to elevate. Okay. You know. Now your material, do you write it? Is it do you write your own material and is it based on your personal experience or interests? Like how do you go about that? Uh, most of my most of my material I write on stage. You know, on like stage. yeah, like a lot of times when I have the microphone, there's thoughts I always have thoughts every day. I'm okay, thinking about okay. different things, but I never physically just write them out and try to make it into a joke form. Mm -hmm. uh, but when I do get on stage, what I will do is I'll start my routine off with something I'm comfortable doing already. And then after they're laughing and they're already on my side, I'll slip in two or three new things that I just thought about and see how they go over it. And depending on how that happens, I'll either use it again mm -hmm. or I'll tweak it. You know, I said, well, they didn't laugh at this part, but they laughed at this part. So sometimes you got to cut the fat mm -hmm. and then sometimes you just have to come back and revisit it a little later and it might be something, you know, funny for the people. Now, have you ever performed when not one person was laughing? Wow. I tell you what. Um, you ever got booed? I, I didn't get booed. I've been blessed. I didn't get booed, but what, they, what I did get was a bunch of uh, table talk, like people just not paying attention to me. Okay, okay. Yeah, that's probably worse mm -hmm. than getting booed. Right. Um, but uh, I did a show, this was earlier on in my career, mm -hmm. I did a show, there was a lot of big names on the show. Right. I didn't know the difference between going behind a particular person okay. and come, you know. So they had this comedian at the time, he was hilarious. Um, actually, uh, I can't remember his name offhand, but he went on stage and he tore it up, right? Really? So now they bring me up. I got maybe one year, two years in the you game. Got this big and I got this big thing. I go on stage and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna hit him with this joke, I'm gonna hit him with that joke. Right. I get up there, man, and I'm like, hey, how's everybody doing? They don't even respond to that. Oh, wow. They don't even respond to that. Hey, give yourself a round of applause. No response. No? So now I'm, I'm getting a little nervous, you know? And Jeez. yeah, and I only had to do five minutes, but I swear that five minutes felt like three hours. Now, I was gonna ask you, now how long are you usually on stage for? Um, Average night, 25 minutes. Average night, 20, 25, 25 minutes, minutes on, stage? on stage, yeah, performing. And then when we go out to people's shows where we may not be booked on the show, uh -huh. you might wanna do a little time, they may give you seven minutes just oh, to wow. get on stage, yeah. Okay. Believe it or not, seven minutes is a long time really? if you don't have your things going on, yeah. Right, you just go up in there and just if wing you, Yeah, you go up in there winging it, exactly. You're gonna find, uh, you're gonna hit that brick wall, it's gonna be hard, you That's know? crazy. Yes. All right, everybody, we're gonna take a short break, but when we get back, we have more with Mr. Purnell Holloway. Hey, come Stay back. Stay tuned. Come back. The realest thing that you could do was just put a drum beat with nothing but a drum beat. Welcome back to Behind the Grind. We're here at 
at the Lini Express, and I'm here with Pernell Holloway. Hey, welcome back. Yes, welcome. I learned so much about you. So far, you have a lot of energy going about you. Absolutely. This is great. That's so. one thing. That's one thing with stand-up comedy. You have to come with energy. Right, to the you stage. do. It's, yeah, you cannot be like a hum They can feel that energy yes. on the stage. Yes, and that's that. why it's so important. Like I tell new comedians all the time, like when if you're gonna deliver, deliver. Like mm -hmm. act it out. Like we have to act out. Yeah. yeah. If you make a facial expression, make the face. Mm -hmm. You know, go through the motion that it takes because right. that little bit extra mm -hmm. is what's gonna get them to laugh. Now, if that wasn't funny, at least your facial expression would make me laugh. I know that about myself. <laughs> exactly. I'll be trying to be serious and I'll do this weird look. I mean, I've gotten so many weird looks and people have caught me in so many weird places. But um. <laughs> Poor Girl, Rich Girl. Tell me a little bit about that. Oh, wow. Okay. Poor Girl, Rich Girl is a stage play that was uh, written and produced by a young lady named Stats Cordero. Mm -hmm. uh, the play, we basically have six, seven main characters. Okay. Uh, it's about three young ladies who were college mates. You know, they, mm -hmm. they went to college together. And two of the three went on to become lawyers. Okay. The other one was like a housewife type of deal. Mm -hmm. She didn't necessarily finish her education with the law. So uh, when they get the law firm, there's a little bit of friction between them. Right. Uh, we're stemming back to college, but we don't know that until a couple of scenes into the play what's really going on with them. Right. It's laced with uh, a lot of humor. Uh, there's a lot of uh, secrecy, right? I read secrecy, about that love. Yes, yeah, a little uh, betrayal. backstab. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So uh, since December, we've been in about seven different cities. Okay. And we've been here in New York. We put it on, I think, four different occasions. Oh, wow. And each time we had a nice turnout of people. Uh, they always seem to be re responsive to the uh, show okay. and uh, this very last one we just did was at the producers club on uh, uh, July 26th we had a sold out audience okay. I even had it uh, recorded I had somebody record it for us mm. so we could make a little promo to be able to take ourselves outside of New York outside okay. of New Jersey outside of Connecticut right yeah oh, okay so what would you prefer you rather do the play stand-up comedy actually I like to do film oh really? yeah I like to do film because this is what I like about film you study your script, you, you find out where you belong in your, you know, your character and all that good stuff. You do the work. But once you nail it and they say cut, uh -huh. it's done. That's it. You go it's home, done. you're done. It's a wrap. Yes, people can watch it 18 times. It's going right, to be like right, right. Friday. It's the same thing, mm -hmm. but you nailed it. Right. That's the difference, you know. But with comedy, stand-up comedy, every single night you have to duplicate what you just did the night before, right. if not better. You know, you always want to better yourself. You're only as good as your last show. Right, right, right. So if your last show wasn't that good, your focus should be killing this next show. Like I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be tight. tight right. Yeah, run my material nice and tight. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, one thing I want to work on more mm -hmm. is improv. Okay. Improv. I'm not really that great with improv. I'm good as a host. Mm. When I'm hosting a show, I can keep the crowd entertained. Right. But just straight stand up, like you see whose line is it anyway? Yeah. That type of. That's what I, I think I may have to take a class. It's a. Really? It's amazing. Yeah. Oh, okay. You may have to take a class to be improv. Hey, anything to make yourself <laughs> Whatever, better. That's it. I invest in myself. Yes, and I have no out. problem investing in uh, Pernell Holloway. Now, no problem. I went to one comedy show. One. And it. let me tell you, I was so <laughs> nervous because I thought that they were gonna pick on me. You ever uh, seen like wilding out? Yes. And the comedians that go in there, yes. they be picking on the, they just be picking on everybody, everybody. and making them feel humiliated. Right. And I cry for them. Right, right. Are you that type of comedian? Not that type to where I say things that's gonna make them feel. Um, uncomfortable okay. or exclude them from the crowd mm -hmm. but what I will do is I ask general questions that will lead me into jokes that I already have set up in my mind okay. like I ask them how long you guys been together or whatever mm -hmm. depending on the number of years they tell me or depending on if the guy looks like he's taking too long right, to right. think about it I'll make fun of that moment okay. you know and I, I there's ways to do it without making yeah, somebody yeah. feel uncomfortable right. if anything I make them feel a little more uh, in, in, involved with me, you know, okay, engaged like with yeah. me. Yeah, I tried that approach as opposed to like, oh, Tearing look at that coat. Yeah, oh, look at where'd you get that I shirt from. That's so rude. Right. I cried for I this didn't know girl. hefty made clothes. Yeah, you know, that is like so that. mean to make them strip and know they're not doing good. <laughs> right. And you talking crap right in front of their face. Exactly. That's so they're mean. struggling. Right. And then they walk off the stage with their eyes all red and they look like they're crying. Right. I'm that girl who'll be crying. Oh. I have no shame. I'm gonna cry. <laughs> so let me ask you, how do you prepare for your show? Do you do like a little Dance. I you actually, take a shot of you know what I do? Honestly, I don't really drink a lot. Okay. But what I do is I, I'll, I'll take a deep breath. Okay. I'll hold my breath for like. 
12 seconds oh. and then slowly just let it out yeah really slow and for some reason that calms me enough to to you know cause we always get butterflies yes. I still get butterflies yes, yes, yes. I do big shows you know what, what scares me sometimes bigger than a big show if I came in if this was a show uh -huh. and you saw eight people there that would make me nervous that's the hardest thing to make you know, a smaller group of people like all these eyes are on you and you feel like they're judging and they're talking about you <laughs> and I'm sitting here jittering and okay I know they're looking at me but meanwhile they're looking at the, the stuff refrigerator over there okay okay I don't, but I don't you like, think yeah, they're looking I, at you and but to me they really are <laughs> and it just makes exactly me I don't like it and that's the that's the thing about comedy, you know. Uh, it, it it takes time mm -hmm. to really uh, become seasoned, and, and and the more time you put into it, the the easier it looks. When somebody sees you, like, oh man, I could do that, mm -hmm. because you made it look so effortless, right. so easy. And some of the material I have that I use today is the very same material that I had when I first started. So Only you repeat certain jokes. Yeah, certain oh. jokes are like part of my anatomy. Like, right, that's who you they are. stay with you, right? Right, right? But I don't use them all the time. I don't tell them at every single show. You okay. know, I mix it up okay. because the last thing you want to do, we all want followers. We mm -hmm. say, follow me on Twitter, follow me on Facebook. But when people actually come out to the shows and they're following you to mm -hmm. different shows, the last thing you want them to say is, oh, he said that whole thing last night. The I same, just heard him last yeah, night. he said yeah. that same thing last night. But I try to mix it up enough between current events, mm -hmm. uh, something I may have just wrote, or some old material that they, you know, I, I just switch it around. It's never the same exact order. You never played it out. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's interesting. <laughs> so name three actors or actresses or comedians that you would love to just work with? Love to work with, okay. Uh, Jamie Foxx. Oh, I would love okay. to work with Jamie Foxx. He's so talented yeah. in many, many ways. Yes. Love to work with Jamie Foxx. Actually, I would like to work with Ice Cube. I know he's not really? a comedian, but yeah, He's man. kind of funny and Friday. He's funny, like, yeah, he's he has funny. his own little he's, personality. He has his own yes. uh, humor, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I would love to work with Ice Cube. And if I had to, uh, third pick? Uh, pick a female. Let's go to female. A female? Though. Okay, um, I like Taraji, Taraji, Taraji Henson, yes. right? Taraji Henson. I uh, love her flow. Yes. I loved her in She's Baby so Boy. Elegant. I loved her in all the roles she plays. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. and she Did you see be, her in the last movie? The, uh, what's the uh, one? Uh, with Think the, Like a Man 2? I didn't see Think Like a Man 2 yet. Did you honestly. see the first one? I saw the first one. It the was so good. The second one was even more funny. Really? They did this one scene where they were rapping to Poison. Ride you right out of your mind, steal your heart. This whole scene was just a video really? in the movie oh, of them doing this. Of doing the poison. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see. Okay, crazy. I'm going to definitely crazy. see that movie. All right. right, so tell everybody out there, the young men and young women who want to pursue this as a career, mm. what advice would you give them? Um, for first, I would say, um, honestly, do not quit your job. Like, like if you have a job and, and, and you're working on your stand-up career, stay working, you know, keep a paycheck underneath you uh, for security, of course. But as you grow, unless you're able to go out of town where you're going to be gone for three or four days at a time, there's no reason to quit your job. You know what I mean? Try to keep your, your, your form of employment intact. But what I would tell you also is go to these different clubs. Don't just do the same three or four places that you're comfortable okay. with. Go to white rooms, go to the uh, mainstream rooms, do some of the urban rooms, just uh, try to be as broad and as, as general as possible right. when you're writing your comedy or when you have your thoughts for comedy. Try mm -hmm. to think of it for the broadest base first. Don't start with just my people are going to understand this right. because that's when you're going to eliminate yeah, yourself. You it's just like a guy who goes on stage and he addresses the women first in the audience, which is okay, mm -hmm. but you just cut out every man because you just say, yeah. hey ladies, uh, how many ladies is that? So right. first include everybody. Body, and then start branching off into your You're individual. You just boxed and you close yourself off. You just you close yourself yeah. off. If you, yeah. So depending on how you direct yourself, mm -hmm. uh, you can you can either be good or bad. You know? Okay. So what's your next step right now? My next step, honestly, is going to be more acting work, more uh, auditions. Okay. Um, I'm even uh, considered. Someone told me I have a voice that I, I'm going to look into voiceover work. Oh, I, I took classes for that Did two you? years ago. Yeah, that's something to do, I'm going to um, do. Like the Rugrats I wanted to do, something like yeah, that. Because, yeah, because you know, our voice is powerful, mm -hmm. you know, yes. we all have a voice. And then when you train your voice mm -hmm. to do the highs and the lows, right. I listen to the uh, news broadcasters a lot in the okay. morning, like when they're telling the news, mm -hmm. and I listen to how they 
you know, they're talking, but it's not just like they're just talking to you right, and me. Right, right, they're right, talking right. with a with a purpose, you right. know. And that's what I want to study. I want to get into that. Oh, okay. So have you looked it up now? Are you? Doing I it? haven't looked it up now, but I know a gentleman who's in that field, and he's mm -hmm. very successful in that field. Right. And so we've been conversing back and forth, and he's going to kind of show me the ropes a little bit. Oh, okay. Yeah. Do you yeah. know when you're going to start that? I don't know exactly. I don't have a date when okay. I'm going to start, but it'll, it'll definitely be before the end of this year uh, as sure far as that. the training and, mm -hmm. and getting to know more about the uh, getting into character mm -hmm. for a voiceover role. You know what I mean? So you want to do like a cartoon? I don't know. Whatever they, whatever, I don't know. I really, you don't I, I would know. love to think yes. Oh, you know, okay. sky's the limit. Now, if that goes well, you're going to stop Never stop Damn. comedy. No, comedy is my first love. Stand up, the stage, mm -hmm. being in front of a live audience, putting your thoughts out there, good or bad, and seeing how they respond is priceless. You know, okay. you can't get that from uh, sitting and blogging about it. I mean, people could comment, but that instant exchange of humor to laughter ratio right. is is, it is phenomenal. Yes, keeps us healthy. That's it what does. I say. It, it really does. Much. It helps to laugh and enjoy yourself because right. we all have problems, yes. and when you leave the show, those problems will still be there. Mm -hmm. So while you're here. Enjoy yourself. Nah, I Let agree yourself with go. You. Yeah. I do. Agree you have permission with you. to laugh. So before we leave, we're gonna mm -hmm. play a little game. A little game. A little game. Okay. What would you prefer? So I'm gonna okay. ask you a couple of questions. You pick and tell me why. You okay. Ready? Yeah. Beyonce or J Lo? Beyonce. Why? Uh, because she's the most beautiful woman I think on the planet right now. Honestly, I mean I love her. I think she's dope. I love her music and I love her physique. Halle Berry or Tahaji? Tahaji. Over Holly Berry? Over Holly Berry, really? yeah. Holly Berry that had four men, they all left her. She can't be no good. She can't be worth nothing, you know what I mean? So I'm going to go with Taraji. I like the way she portrayed herself in Baby Boy. That's my girl. Okay, you took that's, it back. That's your bag. That's that. my all girl. All right, I just watched that yesterday, matter of fact. <laughs> the car needs yes. fixing, Jody. <laughs> the car needs fixing. Uh, T-shirts or polos? I go with T-shirts. I'm a T-shirt man. Um, okay. While I'm speaking of T-shirts, this is my actual T-shirt. It says, no rest for the weary. For everybody who can't see it. Yeah, if you can't see it, it's just basically my logo. And uh, no rest for the weary is nothing new. Mm -hmm. It's just, uh, for me, it's more of a state of mind. You know, it's meaning that I'm not going to rest on what I've done so far. I'm right. going to continue to try to the voiceover classes. Mm -hmm. I invest in myself. I have no problem spending money right. to better myself, you know. Put out money, you get money. Yeah, yeah. you know, you that's the thing. People don't want to do the work. Mm -hmm. They want the results, but they don't want to do the work. So yeah. now I'm willing to do the work. I, I do this full time. Okay. This is, like, I don't have a paycheck. Like, like, every day that I go out, I'm going out to earn money from comedy to pay whatever little bills or whatever I have mm -hmm. to do, you know. Right. And then I Outside of the stand-up comedy, like I said, we do other things. You do the plays, you mm -hmm. do the acting. So we have to supplement what we don't get in the stage. We have to get somewhere else. Understandable. Okay. Yes. One more. Jordans or Nikes? Uh, Jordans. Oh. Jordans. But Jordans, are, they are Nikes, right? Basically. Right? I mean, Nike. I still call them Jordans, and I don't go right, right. like those Nikes. Right, because, like you know, like, you know, you got Reebok and Nike and Adidas, but, right. but Jordan is with Nike, you yeah. know what I'm saying? So that's like one brand. Mm. But, yes, I love Jordans, but I would never pay the money that these kids are paying for their sneakers. It's ridiculous, man. They make them for, like, $4 over there. Yes. $4 you can get for The ones that are coming out on 17th are, like, Almost 200. And, and like, we can afford this, really. Right? You know this what I'm crazy. saying? You see these fools crazy. standing online and they're waiting to get a pair of $200 sneakers, but when you try to tell them to go do something like they invest that 200, yeah, yeah, why don't you invest that 200? In school or a voiceover class. A voiceover class, right? <laughs> do something that's going to benefit your future. We're so used to baby boy guns mm -hmm. and butter, you know? You're spending things money on things, right? Time. You're going to spend money yeah. on things that are going to depreciate, that have no value two years from now, nothing in it. So let's look at building. That's something that's gonna take you further and something you're gonna grow out of. Absolutely. You know what I'm so Absolutely. I completely understand that. But thank you so much. You're more than welcome. Time. Thank you guys. It was a I appreciate pleasure, it. Pleasure, pleasure having you. Everybody who doesn't know Pernell Holloway, please look him up. You can Google him. He's been in plays, short films. He's hilarious. Thank Make you sure guys. you look him up. And thank again, you. thank you so much for tuning in to Behind the Grind. And I am your host, Missy Breezy. Peace. <laughs>